Should I just talk more robustly? Was this is this an appropriate volume? That could probably help. Well, I am uh, <clears throat> just popped a, a lozenge, just took a shower, did the Afrin mm. spray, so I'm as little congested sure. as, as I've been for the last five days. So, and why is Let's that? Let's get this baby on a roll. I could feel it. <laughs> mm. I don't what know. are you? What are you working on? A crossword? No. No, I'm just just shut up, man. I'm, I'm, I'm I have some notes that I took and prep. No way, you prep for the stuff? show. I mean, every once in a great while, I'd like to contribute to the start of things, or at least have something to fall back on. All right, you can start the show now. Okay. Damn, I haven't said words to mm. people in several days. <laughs> that's, cre- that's creepy. <clears throat> got my tea, my what honey. A tea? Mm. Folks, All right, here we, we go. Got so I'm, we got tea, we yeah. got coffee. You know what that means. This is a morning recording session. It is. And mm. I am rocking, uh, well, the Christmas shirt and the tree. You like the tree? That wasn't here when you were here last week. No. Wow, that is festive. I'm festive. Got mine up too. Well, speaking of last week when you're here, we shouldn't have made out because now I got COVID. Oh so. boy, there it is. It was just a few minutes too. Like, it, I thought you had to make out <laughs> for like more than five minutes to pass it along. But yeah, sure that enough. might be the mumps or something. The measles. One of those. Something is called the kissing disease, yeah. diphtheria, Dude. bubonic plague. Ten year after, ten year after, <laughs> COVID's done. Mm-hmm. I get it. I'm Two thousand and yeah. late. Did, well, they didn't even get it when it was COVID? cool. Is What's this that? your first COVID? Is it this is. your first? Mm-hmm. <gasps> we I popped Matt's it. COVID, Sherry. I did. Mm-hmm. Wow. Congratulations. But yeah, it is not cool now. Like, you are the parent trying to <laughs> be cool after something fell out of being cool. You're like, hey, guys, got COVID. Your work's you can't like, even get tell to people work, now. You lazy bastard. I know. Right? Like, ew. It's shameful you and still awkward. still get that? Ew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing my cool. Han Solo bathrobe, which here, let me, I can model mm-hmm. it for you a little bit. Oh, wow. He is getting <laughs> up. Got the gun holster. Oh, my God. That is amazing. <laughs> it is a full, like, Han Solo ensemble turned into a robe. It's actually pretty awesome. So if, if you're wondering, folks, this you may gotta be watch something this worth tuning in and actually watching what Matt's wearing. It's pretty great. Um. So during the COVID time, this was like a, uh, this robe was a foundation, it's a foundational piece in my wardrobe for the last few years, mm. several years actually. Super comfy, but I used to wear this every day during the first several months of COVID. Like I used to walk to the park in this. <laughs> actually, I, you know, I'm going to, I'll, I'll stitch in a picture here. I'll add it into the video. Like we take Hoosier the dog on a walk and I wouldn't even get dressed for the outside. That's how down bad I was. Like it was just like just you know, wearing the. The, the bathroom I don't every know day. if I ever mentioned I don't know if I ever mentioned it but that's funny because it must be a, a trend in the covid world because when I was um out and about uh house hunting right at the beginning of, of covid and stuff is there I did drive by someone walking in a full stormtrooper get up just walking down the street <laughs> like the full, the like the actual stormtrooper Wait, like a onesie or mm. armor? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, like full body. Like they look like they were an extra that got lost off of the set. And <laughs> really? they're just walking down the street, like placidly, like just nothing else. I literally pulled over so that I could film it out of my rear view window, rear view window walking down the main street. I pulled onto a side street, parked off to the side, turned around, and just <laughs> watch a stormtrooper walk by. <laughs> like I, I kind of wish I had stopped him and been like, hey, 
So what are you all about? Like, I want to know about that person because one of two things either happens. They're either a funny person with a story to tell or they're completely insane. I win both ways. There's no way you stop and talk to the person casually walking around in a stormtrooper and go like, well, that was a boring story. This is the way. Um, there you go. I mean, I remember taking walks in the neighborhood and just seeing, like, you'd be down. Like, I would have loved to see that because somebody did, like, sidewalk. I knew, like, one house would always do sidewalk chalk, and it was really good. Like, Lilo and Stitch and, like, per, like perfect Disney drawings. And I would walk by their house just because I needed the entertainment of it. I needed to see, like, like you needed some to kind see of how human creation. Yeah, yeah. Man. Like, one day they had, like, the Thunderbirds fly over Austin, and everybody was out at their curb like you're just gonna watch him for two seconds and they didn't even go over our house but you could hear him and we were like oh hello hello humanity <laughs> yeah neat um then you like that's then not you like see tuesday night at like, work com- what yeah well it just approached I, I don't know i guess i'll do the quick uh summary of my experience like i just got really sick too it sucked because tuesday night like i had run during the day um and i actually have a on my list, I have a thing called, I don't know, a Jeff is, and we'll come up with a name. I want to know how Jeff would have handled this, because I think I did it the way Jeff would. I actively thought about it. But we'll get back to that. But I went for a run yeah. during the day. Like, I was even planning, because like, I had Wednesday off. I was like, I'm going to go out tonight and get some drinks after work, just to, like, get out, you know? I'm feeling it. Like, at 6 p.m., all of a sudden, I got the, the nose to throat, like, dry, like, well of whatever it is. And you're like, oh, no. I was like, this is a cold that just came on real quick out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, I was like... I took my lunch or dinner and I just put my head down. I was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> it was just like it <laughs> happened so fast. I was just getting knocked over. So I bought a bunch of stuff, like sick day stuff. Didn't go out. I bought a COVID test just in case. And then, yeah, in the middle of the night, I woke up with like just super sore throat, achy. And I was like, fuck. But I didn't do anything Wednesday. I mean, I didn't go anywhere, but I was like, I'll just be sick. And Thursday before I went into work, I took the test. Sure enough, double lined, prego. I think I sent you the picture. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Should have worn a condom. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's been going through the cycle of it. It sucks. I hate it. The worst, I mean, the worst, well, I'm alive, so that's good. But just not being able to go anywhere. Like, my mom dropped me off some groceries and stuff. And I, I like, take a walk every day anyway, even though it totally wins me. <laughs> like, I get tired from a walk because, like, my lungs don't work the same. <laughs> like, like right. today's the they're, day where I'm currently broke. coughing up mustard-flavored gum. That's fun. Um, Mm -hmm. and, but it's just like, you know, it's rapid cold and, uh, can't sleep. It's all super great stuff. Uh, but I got like, I don't know how you do like being sick. The worst thing for me would be like getting to midnight, having spent all day inside, not talking to anybody, but not having even spent a minute outside or like, I still, I'm trying to keep up with like dishes or like trash. Cause you know, if you get sick and you don't like keep up with your trash or like tissues and getting that stuff out, like it just feels like more weight on you. So I've at least been like active about that just so I feel like I'm doing something like yesterday. I just wore jeans in the house all day. Cause, like, I got to wear outside pants. Cause this is like, otherwise it'll be so much worse. It's like, I won't be able to sleep. I'll have like an- anxiety about my day, even though I have an excuse yeah. to not have done anything, but not to have not have like stepped outside or worn like regular clothes. Mm-hmm. It would just get to mm-hmm. me for some reason. I don't know why. Always, always so those shower. Are little things I try. Always shower, even shower, if you're yep. tempted and you're like, I'm weak. You're like, no, you gotta, you gotta get in the shower. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't. It kind of grants you like a little bit of feel good too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like fake, like you're like, wow, I think I'm getting better. This shower made me better. And 20 minutes mm-hmm. after you're out of the shower, you're back to ground zero, and you're like, well, at least I'm still feel like crap, but at least I'm kind of clean. <laughs> like, um. <laughs> So always uh, another good one is like something really easy is like, you know, clean, clean down your countertops. Just give a little spray and wipe. Just cl- clean something quick and easy. Yes. It's not going to be rigorous, um, but that can feel good and it can like visually help you. And you're like, all right, so I'm actually not getting my like, it's kind of like the same as tissues in the garbage and stuff. It's like, all right, I'm not getting filthier <laughs> in this home mm-hmm. or as a human. So. Yeah, that's stuff to do with sick, but I didn't. It, plus, it didn't that disinfectant smell really cuts through the congestion, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, I get that like mix between Clorox and lemony smell. Yeah, that's that's good. That builds character. I thought about taking a bath. Are you a bath guy? Because like anytime I go into the bath and I know it's supposed to be comforting, I sit. All I do is think about how uncomfortable I am while I'm in there. 
I'm just like, I'm, should I be wearing this bathing suit? <laughs> I can't. I don't like being. <laughs> I, I wear a bathing suit. I don't like bathtub. looking at my dick between my legs, just hanging there. <laughs> so I got to wear a right. bathing suit. It's, I just don't want to stare, be face to face with for, it. For a bath, you're like, should I have bubbles only so I don't see my shame? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you're like, which is which is worse, the bubbles because they're floofy, so it makes me feel yeah. question my masculinity or the the, the ability to see everything and question my masculinity crap yeah. <laughs> so i don't have like a bath bomb obviously or bulba so you just spray in the soap and shampoo you have into the water <laughs> just like <laughs> a mix of whatever smells those are and hope they make bubbles <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh yeah i'm not uh, a bad guy I, I mean that'd be desperate i'd um, have to like you know i i'd need i'd need a very i need like a jetted tub to ever convince myself mm. to be a bath person bath baths are just they're not comfortable. Uh, you know, I'm over six feet tall, so they're certainly not built for someone six feet tall to be bathing in like a standard bathtub. So no, I'm not, I'm not a bath guy. And I just don't, I don't want to just sit in the bathroom. There's nothing entertaining me in the bathroom. I can't relax. It's not comfortable. So how am I going to relax? Like there's nothing about baths, um, that helped. The last time I did one is I took a bath in Epsom salts over the summer because but that was for medicinal yeah. purposes as I was covered yeah. in rashes. So mm. that had a purpose, but it still sucked. Yeah, I forgot, dude, you are tall. Like when I saw you in person, I forgot how tall you were. <laughs> he yeah, came Fred, in. Look like, how Whoa. much you've grown. Hi, yeah. He's like my <laughs> like, grandma yeah. seeing yeah. me like, oh my goodness. Dude, did you keep growing like into your 20s? Do you know? Like you must have. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I don't remember you being that tall. No, it. well, I, I hit... Uh, I probably didn't hit my growth spurt. Um, my my sixteen year old driver's license, I believe, said I was five nine. Um, so I don't think I hit my growth spurt until I was like, yeah, like seventeen or eighteen, and I shot up a couple inches. Still taller than I'll like, ever be. Like our like our buddy Mike, uh, Mikey D. We always say that, like, when, when I met him in sixth grade, he was literally the same height that he is now. And, like, he was a towering human in sixth grade, was, except that's right. then he didn't grow from there. Him and Flanagan? Flanagan was a tall yeah, boy? Yeah, him and Flanagan were, like, those tall boys. Flanagan, Dan's got to be. How, I mean, how do I get? Prob- I might be taller than Dan. Like, how do I end up with friends with a bunch of taller dudes? And I, get, I was just thinking that, and I was like, well, I guess almost every guy is taller than me. <laughs> It's just well, the way it works you, out. Who are, you, who are you maxing out at like what are you five five six? Five eight. Five seven? Five five Matt. Matt, are you five eight or are you like athlete listed height five eight? I'm five eight and <laughs> one fifty five. <laughs> no, it is, yeah, five eight. Doc says five I, eight. I All squirted right. out another half inch after my twenties. <laughs> in his uh, 20s Matt, yeah was i mean i'm honest the, i put that the, too on my you're hanging from the i put it on my dating profile monkey bar, yeah Ooh. i put it i'm like i don't want to i'm not gonna play pretend here five eight that's my two truths and a lie now on hinge it's just something like um yeah two truths and a lie like i'm not six feet um i've never been six feet i will be six feet <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just hoping somebody's like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's funny. I just, because I want to put it out there right away. Like, I don't want to be like what? hiding it or anything. Like, yeah, it's like there's no point in hiding it or pretending, uh, you know. No. So, no. You know, fun, so if funny, you're like I've five foot or below, I think you subconsciously inspired me. I've been watching cat, MTV's Catfish on Hulu lately, been going back and watching Catfish. So, tell me about that's. I was wondering, okay. That's a question I had on here for a deeper dive one day, but what reality TV are you into? So tell me. Tell me about Catfish and why you're into it. So Catfish is great because it's – there's a, there's a myriad. Like I, I, I overanalyze a lot of TV and into, into why it pulls me in and stuff. Catfish offers a lot of dynamics. Um, you get the backstory of the person being catfished, right? They go to the show and yeah. they're like, hey – I haven't met this person. And then you get the amazing aspects where you just want to yell at the TV for every single person. Yeah. Dude, really? And you think this person's real? Like, it's like, all right, tell us a little about it. All right, well, 
you know, I saw this picture on MySpace once. That's the best part is that it started all when MySpace was still really big. So a lot of this new story, yeah. a lot of the stories start with MySpace. So it's like I was on MySpace and I came across this picture and I thought it looked great. So I messaged them. I'm like, that's a great start. I'm like, I don't even know how you came by this random photo. But and then it's so, you know, they messaged me and stuff. But um, we've been going together for seven years online. Um, but like, okay, have, you ever met, have, have you ever met them? <laughs> no. OK, well, do you guys like, um, you know, video chat? No, they say they don't have. Uh, a video camera or any way of that. Okay, what about talking on the phone? No. They said they don't, their phone got turned off. It's like, so I sent them money to get their phone turned on, but yeah. they still haven't called uh-huh. me. And then you're just like, yeah, I don't know. Everything's lining up. I mean, yeah, they're like, yeah, but they're like really sweet. And they tell me how they love me. And I'm like, this is awesome, but also really, really sad. Like, cause we're, these same people are the ones that get mad at, you know, other people for like, sending money to the the prince in africa for you know to get over to the country so that they can give them more money back so it's just like that's a that's an interesting story and then they like they pull out absolutely next to zero resources other than google and debunk the person within like 20 seconds the guys who run the show they're like okay so we searched this photo and it comes up as this person in wichita kansas who's very not your person and blah 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 and they're like oh okay so what do you think they're like i think it's still them and like it's just like really sad and hopeless but then like when they meet the people it can be anything i mean there has been catfishes there has been like um men posing as women women posing as men people that know the people through like a friend like people's exes have been the one catfishing them for years um, there was one of a real big loop de loop where the people knew each other, the two people online, but have not met. So there was no catfishing, but they call, but they had one, the one person reach out to catfish and act like they had, didn't know if that was the person or not, just so that catfish and MTV would fly them out to see the person like on their dime. Ooh. So like. I'm good. like, okay, that's actually pretty brilliant and jokes on you, MTV. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just this weird dynamic. Um, some things work out, some things don't. So I think better than normal life or not normal life, better than normal uh, scripted TV shows in America is that not every – things can turn out fine. Things can turn out meh, and things can turn out really bad. And I love that dynamic that you don't know how it, the story is going to end, and I think it feels more realistic – and that's what's pleasant about that as opposed to our normal scripted American shit, which would end in like, you know what? We got married or you know what? They weren't exactly who we are, but we're going to stay best friends forever. And it's like it, it, you don't know. And I think that might even be the most appealing part is that it's complete chaos and comedy. But then you really have no idea how each episode's going to end. So me talking about um, being an online dater makes you think of that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, which side I, am I on you, that? I mean, you're definitely. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm you Neve. leave yourself. You leave yourself to be <laughs> the person who's being cat. You are one pathetic loser. Yeah, you're gonna. You could be um, catfished. You could. Be I could catfished. see in a way, like. I don't know how many of those episodes end up where the person's like, "Yeah, I, I knew it," but just because like it still fulfills some kind of feeling in them, even though they know they're getting scammed, probably. A good way into it they're like yeah but this person still says things that i want to hear and it's still some kind of relationship even though i know it's based in like all lies or something like that it's still something i have with somebody <laughs> like there's oh yeah I mean, that's, and that's it's and that's fine it's moderately i really depressing no but... i i see no pr- like that's kind of how you have to look at it in the best light like you said like it's like all right deep down inside i know for real there's no way this is actually <laughs> legit based on everything but like I don't, yeah, I don't know. That's the toughest part of online dating is the online part. <clears throat> either you can't, either you have to understand that it's coming with lies if it's too long. But that's why the thing that is like, if, if the intention is eventually to meet and settle down with someone, I think you need to meet them face to face as quick as possible. 
Yeah, that's why. I mean, like on Hinge, for example, they have you can verify yourself. Like you got to go through like several steps of um, like just emails and different things. So then your profile says verified. So mine says verified. So when a girl goes onto my profile and they're like, whoa, not really. Is this he's guy verified. for real? No way. He's the it's real like deal. It's like old timey awesome. people being like, he's bona fide. Yeah. Yeah. He wow. really does look like this. He really does have a five <laughs> head and it's not six feet. <laughs> Boy, I whoa, wish I was podcast? being catfished. <laughs> yeah. I would never put that. I have a podcast. <laughs> I wouldn't bring that up till, uh, the 12th date maybe it's like when do you tell somebody like you have cancer or something like if you or some kind of like medical issue you gotta like oh i would i didn't know i didn't want you to get scared off it's like oh, i do a podcast with my friend that doesn't have people listen to i'm sorry i didn't know i could tell you right away like one of those i guess i'll cross that bridge when i get there sure uh, sure like don't even meet the person. Be like, before you meet me, I need you to listen to just three random episodes of this podcast. And then and then, if you still want to message me, let me know. Be like, but this will really make me feel more comfortable because if you still choose to meet me, I will have zero <laughs> like concerns about acting the way I act. Like that, maybe that's, maybe that's your out, man. Is that you don't have to have that awkward situation. You have it pre-recorded of who you yeah, are. Yeah. Um, oh, I want before, well, let's get to your list. I wanted to get to the Jeffism though, before we get to like 45 minutes in. Oh yeah, please. So the day before I get sick pre COVID, so PC, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, so I was running around. So part of my running loop takes me around hoops park, which, you know, it's like, uh, it's basically a little pond in the city. It's I got ducks. People feed the ducks with bread. People take pictures there. It's got gardens. It's, you know, it's a little, it's like a very miniature Central Park in Auburn, um, but you can like walk around it and, you know, like a park, anything you would do at a park, basically, uh, you know, get drunk, throw your Keystone lights there, anything. Um, right. But I was, so I was running around and so I was doing a lap and, you know, let's say so if you're running, Jeff, or you're, if you're walking and you're about to pass somebody going the opposite way, which which side do you take? Ooh, <clears throat> are they oncoming? Yeah, they're oncoming. Okay, I'm coming. I'm hanging to the right as if I were a car. car. Correct. See, see, I'm doing that this is just as Jeff would. This is a Jeffism. Correct. Yes, because this is the way our society works. Much like traffic, any other way, when you walk to to oncoming traffic, whether it's pedestrian, bikes, cars, anything, you pass to the right. So I'm running, and I see this woman. She's about fifty yards out, and she's hugging her left, my right. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna stay on the right here. I'm going to stay on the right because you're going to have to like move to the right because this is how society works and she will not budge. And that's so I'm like, I almost I'm like almost to the right of like going off into the grass to where she, she won't move. So eventually like 10 feet away, I go to the left. And then she has the gall to like give me the, the smile and the nod like, hello. I didn't give it back. I didn't give it oh, back. I was like, no, uh -uh. <laughs> you do not. You do not get to enjoy. <laughs> One of the one of the pleasures of a society of having a, a smile and a nod with somebody. If you don't observe the pass on the right rule, you don't. So she I looked up because I didn't at first I wasn't even going to look at her. But then I had to know if she was going to like do that. So I looked up and she smiled and she did one of these. And I just cold stone, just cold stone. What am I, a parent talking about Steve Austin in the 90s? <laughs> like, uh, and I was like, I just dead faced her. And then just kept going, looked away. I was like, you don't get to, no, you don't get to have this. You don't get to have the pleasures of society no. if you break some of the fundamental rules. So, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. That's, is that, ooh, a, is that a Jeffism? I, I was getting mad because I'm picturing it and I was literally getting mad on your behalf. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another tough one is if you ever go to a YMCA and I use them because they're the most common to have like an indoor track. If you ever run on an indoor track and there's walkers and runners, if you walk mm -hmm. three abreast, you're the worst humans in the world. Like give, there are, there are often lanes where it's the outside lane is for runners, inside lane is for walkers, mm -hmm. middle lane is for literally passing for both. So it's a, it's a great structure and so many people just don't abide by it. And I would literally like brush up to the, 
mere millimeter of shoulder checking walkers if they wouldn't move. And I have no problem with doing it. Like I'd give them a couple laps around if I pass them. And if they still didn't gain courtesy, cause I'd be like, I'm, you know, coming up on your right or something like that. And like, or actually if I'm passing people, I would usually say like on your left, if they're across, but I'm like, I'm just going to start plowing into you. And if you think I'm rude, that's just you being disrespectful and people that walk three abreast, four abreast also in five K's. If I'm running and all of a sudden there's, we're 500 feet from the start and people that got up to the front of the pack up for the start of the race are already walking and they're walking multiple across. I'm like, I will well, I get to the into front. you. I have, I'm like, I have no, they're I have always no the biggest shame. walkers too. Like wide arms. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, just, I'm like, you got to get out of the way. I'm like, it's not for me. I'm not being cocky, but you are being rude. Like, and don't, you're either rude or you're oblivious. Neither one are good. I mean, I guess ch- take whatever moniker, like, you know, whatever, I. Uh, um, kind of rubber stamp you want on it, but you're not good at societal life. So I agree. I, I think that was the right move. I yes. think not giving pleasant, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to be mean, but like you said, you don't get the pleasant, you don't get the smile. You don't get, you don't get smile the casual lot. smile. You don't get it. No. And it's, and how and about it's this? Really, what? So I did a couple laps around. So I ran into, there was one group of women who we did, we'd have a solid pass. Right. And mm-hmm. I'm a first time around. I did do the, you know, hi, hello, hello. Hey, how are we? Uh, neither one of us is a murderer. Okay, good. We're all safe. Good. You know, just one of those. That's why you do it mm-hmm. to let people know you're not going to attack them um, or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> At least that's it's what a, guys, do to, ag- guys do to yeah. women is I, I want you to know I'm running. I'm in running yeah. gear. That's why it's important to run in running gear too. You have to mm-hmm. like, you should get Yep. Running shorts and a shirt, not just a t-shirt, but you should look like you are purposefully running because that puts people at ease. Hey, I'm not going to. Oh, I wear fun colors, everything. There you go. Like, mm-hmm. You know, uh, make it fun. Um, but then I, on my second lap around, I saw him again and I was like, I don't, you don't have I'm to not going to do again. this again. We don't have to do right. Yeah. I was like, I don't nope. think we have to do mm-hmm. this again. I'm just going to mm-hmm. keep looking ahead. I don't want to do it again. It's just weird now. Like we don't have to look at each other again. Um, now that yeah, being uh, said, yeah. on, I, I will say there is a caveat to that. Now, if you're running in a park, definitely don't need to. Why? Because we're all doing laps and it's a purposeful walking, running exercise area. So you don't have to give multiple acknowledgements. If I'm running around my neighborhood and coincidentally happen upon the same person, like, 15, 20 minutes later, I'll probably even yell out something to just to be cheeky. Like, oh, there they are. Like, I'll, I'll literally do yep. that to people. I'll be like, ah, there That's she fun. is. Oh, what's up, bud? Like, yeah, because I'm like, all right, if I coincidentally signed you because we are taking different paths but somehow cross over again, yes, I will give the cheeky double acknowledgement. Yeah, because then it's like, now you have a relationship with this person. Like, you clearly live That's in true. the same neighborhood. You know, you're building that bond. Like, oh, that is your dog. I didn't know at the start, but now you still got him. So that's good. <laughs> yes, exactly like that. And that's a good way to make them feel comfortable is to go, oh, that is your dog. Like, that's yeah. nice. I thought you were going to ditch daughter. him at the start of the walk. Yeah. Um, what'd you have? I want to know what's on your list. Well, um, one thing was, is I, I don't remember if I talked about this, but recently I helped um, Caitlin's cousin with his homework. Um, he is in a <laughs> boy, a seventh grade, seventh grade this year, maybe eighth. How did that um, even come about? Like, does he come hang um, out? We, we were we were watching him and his younger sister. It's it's actually her cousin's kids. So we were watching mm-hmm. them. Her cousin uh, needed help watching the kids. So uh, he dropped them off at our house. So I was just watching football and, and he needed to do some homework. So it was math homework. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's let's keep uh, let's keep fresh. Let's see if Jeff can can still homework. And um, I could. But the problem was, is he needed to show his work and the work showing has changed. So I would have to get the answer and then like show him what my process was and he's like oh okay i can run it like this so like it it was this weird complete fuckery 
of like, and, and, and again, I see that, I don't know, I, I, we stopped using the word common core, I feel like. I feel like that doesn't get thrown around anymore. But it, is it, math has changed with how they're relaying it. And the problem is, is just like anything else with teaching is it's like, well, it probably is helping a handful of students. But I assure you that the old way would have been easier for a lot of other students. So the problem is, is you change math. If you're still doing it one way, you're probably now just putting out different kids. So, um, I wanted to ask you is, have you ever like they made it uh, about... easier for the dumb kids? Yeah, there you go. Um, have you ever like thought lowest about common denominator? How, how you do? Oh, that's, that's funny. That's, that's a funny math joke. Um, have you ever thought about how you, oh my God, we're on a delay. You Sounds are delayed. Just keep cutting right. me off. It's amazing. I really appreciate Sorry, it. Sorry, I pressed should, it like three seconds you ago. You should probably keep doing Yeah, no, you should probably keep doing it. It's really helpful on my side of things. <laughs> um, so have you ever thought about how you do shorthand math in your brain? Because I want to talk about it. How do I do? I mean, I think about it once in a while. Like, I always have pretty good math competency. Um, but I guess I I'd probably have in seventh grade, I'm thinking that's like, what you get into like trig and stuff like that. Or what, what I want to give you, I want to give you a math problem and I oh, want to, no. I want you to be able to, wait, I remove all confidence, <laughs> how you, I want you to tell me how, like solve it. All right. But then I want you to recall and tell me how you solved it in your head. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. You're just exposed. Your image just disappeared, so I have confidence that we're streaming really well right, right now. I can hear you. I can All hear right, you. Cool. All right, cool. Um, so the problem is 96 plus 57. Just say the answer when you get it. 96 plus 57, uh, mm -hmm. 153. That is correct. Very good. That's the first step. So you're not an idiot. Okay. So that's we can, we can proceed. Do you know how you now just how do did I get that it? in your oh. head? Yeah. I go up to 100. And then I just subtract from 57 the uh, amount it took me to get to 100 and then add the 53, basically. Uh, see, I don't do it that way. Is that common, my common core? No, I don't know. I, I'm just saying. Oh. Like, I, but, so my brain is I go 9 plus 5 is 14, a.k.a. 140. 6 plus 7 is 13. 140 plus 13 is 153. Okay. So you do it like the old school way, except you do it like if we were doing it on a paper, you you do the uh, the units, the single digits first, and then add the correct. And I do it the op. I yeah. do it the opposite way. Okay. I do the big stuff the same first, idea. and then yeah. yeah. So now I want to try a different one. So we're gonna we're gonna move on. So we differ there. Oh no. How do you do? We're gonna we're gonna do multiplication. Strap in. Oh. Seventeen times twenty. So three forty. Correct. We probably do this the same. I'm guessing. I just do 17 times two and add the zero at the end. I I agree. I agree. Yes, that right. is that is how I do it. All um, right. now throw a curveball at you. 17 times 25. So I would do. Well, I would probably do. I do 17 times 20, okay. and then I add. Um, I think 17 times five. So that would be whatever, five, 35. So 150. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> hold on. Come on. I met it up. So 340 plus, mm -hmm. wait, what was it again? 17 times 25, 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I would do it. Uh, I would do it 20. So I'd know it'd be 340. And then I'd take a quarter of the 340. Um, which would be what? Eighty five. So I, I love it because you're like shit. So four twenty five. Four twenty five. That is, that is correct. But that seemed like so that usually was if really I'm difficult. dealing with like, well, I guess in the pressure it is a little bit because I know like a lot of people are gonna hear us. But usually if it's a number like that, I do like if I can get to a base and then it has like a five or a ten, I do a quarter of it and just add it on because twenty five makes it easier than if it was like twenty seven or something like that. So, so if I can do a quarter or a half of it, like thirty. Well, thirty wouldn't make sense, but you know, I guess your, I kind of your I mean, method but. sounds insane in my head. Like it sounds insane to me, but it works, so it's it's not wrong. What do you do? So mine, 
because, and this is the reason I did 25 is not because I should have maybe done a different number than 17, but the difference between 17 times 20 and 17 times 25 is my brain. When I hear a 25, I go for the quarters of the first number. So I, my brain, I go 25, four 25s equals a hundred. How many fours are in 17? Oh, there are four fours yeah. in 17. So I go to 400 and then there's one 25 left over. So it's four 25. That's how I process. That's like how I shortcut it. When I hear 25, I'm like, okay, I got to build to hundreds and go from there. Like, dude, math. That's why I love math. There's so many different ways. And like when you shorthand, I don't know that any of us learned any of our shorthand methods in class. It's just our brain goes like this, what makes sense for me? Like, and, and, and that's how you do it. Like, but uh, yeah. A lot like of my math, math, math now in life is like all money stuff. Cause it's like store stuff yeah. and you know, like based around the dollar. So it's, I'm not, you're rarely getting too. So like, it's so funny. Cause it's like, I'll, I mean, I'm rarely on the front end in terms of like working with registers now, but if I swing by and somebody needs help, I'll be like, Hey, what do you like, Oh, I accidentally put this in. And it's like, I just look at it and be like, okay, well, I know you Oh, I'm like four thirteen back. Like, how'd you do it so fast? And I'm like, I, uh, I don't know. Like, it's like as basic as it gets. Like it's, it's kind of wild. I don't want to, it's not like a generational thing. Just like, I mean, it is, but not, I'm not blaming them for it, but like, a lot of like 15, 16, 17 year olds don't know how to use cash because they haven't yeah. really. And I'm like, I talked to somebody about that one day. It's like, we need to have in our cashier training, like actual cash handling training now, not just like, what do you do with yeah. the cash? Because like kids don't know how many coins are in a roll or whatever. How many, And I get it. It's not their fault. Like they just didn't grow no. up with it or didn't know how to do it. And they don't know how to ask for change, how much, what makes. You can tell like, hey, do you need change? Like how much? Like, I don't even know. <laughs> what is it? I, I don't know what any of this shit is. I don't I'm even scared. Know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if many adults know the the complexities true, of true. like what's how many are in like how many how much is a roll of nickels? Do you think most adults know it's two dollars? I don't. I don't think most adults know that a roll of nickels is two dollars. Or then to even backtrack further, how many nickels are in a roll of nickels? I don't think people know that. No, you couldn't. So, I mean, that's expecting a lot. <laughs> I think. It is. Or it's like, how many are in a yeah. roll of dimes? Who the hell has 50 dimes? <laughs> why in your why in the, your life would you ever well, also have you don't have to make dimes? them anymore. Because there's like the coin star machine. So people only right. have to like roll up or bring them yeah. to the bank. And also banks don't even accept them anymore. They're like, fuck that. I'm not. Dude, that's the weirdest thing. I hate, like that's you're low. You're low as a bank. If you won't accept rolled change. Well, you could have counterfeit in there. You know what, bank? That's the risk you should be willing to take. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this currency if the yeah. currency people won't take it? You're in the money business. Right. <laughs> literally you literally business. have the purpose of accepting money, and you say this money ain't money enough? Um, so were you also the guy, like, as a kid or as a human being in general? And again, this is a lot less applicable. This would be a way better question 20-plus years ago. Your total comes out to 383. You have change in your pocket. Do you give the cashier eight cents and blow their fucking mind? When it's 383, you give them four dollars and you do you give them four dollars and eight cents? Oh, to make it quarter? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've done stuff like that. I rarely do cash, but I've definitely done stuff like that. I've hate I've not didn't want to sound like a dick because like again, I, I was particular about that stuff. But I remember literally there were times where I'd have to like, they'd like look at me and they're like, oh no, it's only four. And like, try to hand me the eight cents back or and yeah. to, like do that. And I go, just please punch right in 408 and watch what, just punch watch it in. what Believe happens. Me. Right. Punch Believe it in the in, process. This is a magic trick. In, put the money in your till <laughs> and then react to the change it tells you to give me and watch what yeah. you do. <laughs> like, the, Cause then honestly, then they'll put it in, they're like, oh, and it, it's like you literally solve da vinci's code for them they're like holy shit they're like so how long have you been a wizard <laughs> it's yeah everyone bails on math man it sucks because i prided myself on my math abilities as a kid and everyone else was like yo fuck math and i'm like but but math's what i'm good at please don't take this from me yeah mine's pretty basic i mean if nothing else like I always thought, I mean, I think that's what kind of college is too. We've talked about college a bunch, but like 
math just really teaches you ways to solve problems in different ways. So you're right. We come to it in different ways, but we both have an idea about how we want to solve it. Or we both learned different, whatever we've learned gets us to at least a direction to try to solve it. And that's all math really is. Like whether or not you become uh, a professional mathist or not, mm, good. you still like good. learn <laughs> like variables and stuff and like, oh, what does this mean? Or how do I use this? Or how do I combine these different elements to like come up with a solution to this problem? That's all college really is. Like when I talk to, to younger people, which is the word I use now, younger people about college, it's like, you don't have to choose whatever you want, but like college is really just learning how to learn better. Like that's all. I mean, you're, yeah. you're not going to remember everything you learned there. You're not going to remember every book you read. I mean, I, I still don't like, I have a hard time remembering books I read like last year, but I'm like, at least I can read them and enjoy them. And like, and even like now, whatever oh, Russian studies major, how does that apply to anything in my life now? I mean, it doesn't really, but I learned how to, uh, you know, write papers on something I didn't want to write a paper about and how to get through it. You know, like I read things I didn't want to read and learned how to get through it. I, I, it made me travel and learn different cultures and experience things in different ways and, uh, you know, whatever. But at least I learned how to learn and how to get through something difficult and how to finish something. And that applies in one way or another. Yeah. I mean, that's that's certainly – um, you know, for, for a previous employer I worked for, they, a lot of jobs, they would say you have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, and it, there's no, it doesn't matter anything outside of that. And a lot of times that, you know, I was told, yeah, it just says about you that you can take on a task and, and come out of it and not give up and not, you know, and, and achieve the, the getting to the end, which is the degree, it's like more, it's more, it's literally more symbolic. And I'm like, that's great. It's just that task shouldn't cost kids a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Like yeah, that's, true. Yeah. that's, that's the problem with colleges. Like I agree. That is a great concept. And like you said, learning how to learn, but there's no reason why that should be such a costly thing. We, there should be alternatives to prove the same thing because pro especially private colleges, it's all a fucking scam. It's all about making money. It's everything else in this, in the world is, it is for profit. Um, it's pathetic that they want donations from alumni. Why, why you, you, you did nothing in particular for me that other institutions, if I had just chosen to go to another one that I couldn't have gotten elsewhere. So, um, does this yeah, resonate with you? If I go, Get connected for free with Education Connection. Ooh, that, <laughs> that sounds commercial? like a thing. Yes. Like the 2000s. Getting my degree in my own time. Getting that, <laughs> that <one> commercial. <laughs> it's, like... it's like clearly made by like moms, hip moms. Um, yeah, that's like. Yeah, we should uh, pull this out. This is like worth it because this was like peak 2000s. Boy, I don't want to get I don't want to get sued for copyright. I'm just kidding. Whoever created this commercial has zero <laughs> fucks to give about oh, it being oh, yeah. used. Um, here I'll yeah. uh, yeah, I'll get through the ad. But this was That's, like, it's also great because it's so 2000s, and it really reminds me of like how shitty of a decade. I mean, there was a lot of good stuff. I always say that that the 2000s was like the lowest form of culture in many ways. I mean, there's a lot of good like shit that came out, but it was just like like had no identity really for what it what it wanted to be it was like we didn't even figure out reality tv yet you know catfish wasn't around no um challenge real world real world was great but the challenge was in its early days they hadn't figured it out no um just, just this is gonna give you uh just moderately cringy vibes but some nostalgia i think She's like, like a diner server. Oh my god, I for Oh, it's all coming. Look at those back. the converse. The low the low waist jeans with the kind of the the pop punk. She was like the cute pop punk girl that everybody had a crush on. She had like the pre Karen haircut. Whew, what a gym. Education connection match me with the right college for free. Get connected for free. Free. 
education connection connected for free with education connection dude yo so let's let's be honest that whoever wrote that song went deep though like yeah. not only did like, there was there was changes in the style of music towards the end and stuff like the and the spacing for words like it wasn't your normal verse chorus like stylized like they even like went with one pattern but the rhyme might not come until a little bit later and stuff so the writing it reminds <laughs> it seriously reminds me of like the writing styles that like fat mike's does does for like no effects where the rhymes and the rhythms don't line up so like it may be brilliant cheesy as shit but whoever wrote that song tried and tried really hard i know somebody really tried like somebody in la who'd been there like it must have been a band that like had been in la for like 15 years but never got a big break but like hey we'll let you do this education connection yeah Jingle, i think it's like cake, 10 I feel grand like cake, yes. the guys from cake might have written that song with the pacing and, and the like the rhyme schemes and stuff it sounds like it could be a cake song yeah because it's got a blend of your eyes right, a blend of everything a little bit of like pop post grunge but then a little yeah. bit of hip hoppy with the beat so it's like it really appeals to everybody it's like hey i don't have time to give you what i do <laughs> it's like chat ch- like, gpt I dress like please a put punk. out a yeah. generic yeah. song that appeals to everyone <laughs> yeah uh but that was uh but it's honestly that's like the foundations of cuz that was when it was coming out online school and stuff and it was like oh that's not real but it was like it's real to somebody damn it I, I wonder, I want to know if somebody ever like went there and got a degree from doing that. Somebody must have like, who's the, yeah. who are the, the children of education connection? I got to know. Yeah. That's or a like good idea. On, they were the same kids that learned uh, by hooked on phonics. Hooked on phonics. The same exact yeah. kids. 1-800-ABC-DEFG. Oh dude, do you remember? Didn't we used to like prank call hooked on phonics when we did our sleepovers or tried yeah. to? I don't even know what we would say. It could have been anything smart or good. Yeah, one eight hundred. I can't read. EFG. Yeah. <laughs> I can't read good. Hooked on phonics oh worked for God. me. Yeah. So good. Um, so good. Any, what, anything else on the list? Well, uh, let me see. Question for you. Um, By the way, was your cousin's kid impressed by your math aptitude? Or were they just like uh, using you, do you think? It's like easy, Jeff. Let's just get the answer. Let's not worry. No, no, he was, he was like, okay, great, you have the answer, but now I have to kind of like still do work, <laughs> yeah. which I guess is the good thing that he had to do it a different mm-hmm. way because he couldn't just take the answer. But I don't know. I think he was appreciative, but you know, he doesn't overreact. Um, do you get? Do you have email? Does do you have to have access to email for for work? Do you get a, like? Mm-hmm. A lot of HR emails and stuff now because you're a manager. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you get HR or anyone else sending out emails that it's like, hey, just as a friendly reminder, you shouldn't do this stuff or here's an ethical, con- like, remember, ethics are like this. And like, you're just kind of like random, like, hey, make sure you're never doing this. Like, and it's like fireable offenses stuff. Do you ever just get random no. ones? Okay. We so don't like manage it that, that way, I think. Yeah. See, yeah. You, yeah, you got, now I want to know. Now I'm curious, though. Well, because <laughs> like, we we'll, get, we'll get them all the time. And this is for both of my previous employers. Is you just get like, hey, from corporate C- yeah. HR, remember, if you ever see something unethical happening, please report it. And blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, this is a real random reminder. It basically it just makes oh, you go, who just yeah. got fired or who just got yeah. in a lot of trouble for whatever they're t- just you. friendly remindering us of. Because nothing is just a friendly reminder. It's, oh, crap, someone did this. We got to send out an email reminding people not to do this. I guess if there was like a uh, epidemic of some kind of behavior, they would. I've never seen it there because usually everything gets addressed individually and personally. Like Mm -hmm. versus like putting it like it's meant to be. We we do, I think, a pretty good job of keeping all. I mean, the best you can of keeping situations confidential and within house within whoever's involved in it. Versus like putting somebody on blast because somebody's clearly getting put on blast there. <laughs> so, you know. Right. 
Right. And so like, I'm curious. I'm curious, but I also respect privacy. So I'm like, I would never ask the person, like, I don't want them to divulge information that I don't know, but I do want to hear through the grapevine what happened. But sometimes I don't because I'm like, well, I don't want to think differently of someone and I don't want to judge them. And so so I have this like, you know, problem of like duality where I'm like, I really want to know, but I also really enjoy not knowing so that I don't have to continue down this road of judgment. So with yours, could it be from like any other branch or store or whatever? Oh, I mean, other yeah, yeah. Like that's the thing. thing like, yeah. it, it's, oh. it's usually not, it's rarely from a, a like, you know, a specific office. It's more of corporate spectrum around the country. So that's, you really don't know necessarily what it came from. Um, if that's, if it's coming from HR, if it's coming from a manager or something, locally you damn know it how it happened locally so those are the ones that really start fanning the fire yeah. we're just like i wonder as a wonder- reminder we don't credit card uh co-workers butts when yeah. they're making copy i like i like uh, i recently got a, a manager saying like hey everyone just to let you know this person's no longer with the company yeah that didn't mean they quit um when you hear this person's no longer with the company yeah. and it's random <laughs> out of the blue and it's an emergency like powwow about it yeah. that means something bad happened and that person got fired um yeah so we, we got one of those and of course like it's just like all right i know you can't tell me anything but i'm gonna ask follow-up questions because i love because they'll always instinctively managers will say like if you have any questions feel free to ask but the best is when it's that thing, they can't answer any questions. So yeah, I like asking yeah. questions just to like make it awkward for them. They've moved on to new opportunities to put their fingers right. in somebody's mouth. But I can't say anything else. <laughs> They've involuntarily moved on to bigger and better things. What the fuck does that yeah. mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so have, um, that, that brings me to is that like the, uh, the, the person that did, did get cans. Um, I had to be told by my old boss who, who I consider, you know, a friend. And if you meet someone and, you know, you start getting along with them and after hanging out a couple times, do you call them your friend? I mean, yeah, I could see a world of doing that. Does that sound too... Like psycho, I could see a world where I do that. I mean, sometimes I say acquaint like a work acquaintance or a work friend, but then I could see if somebody was like, "Yeah, they're my friend." I'd be like, "I guess, okay." Yeah, you're uh, going down the kind of the route of my question is yeah. that is what like if you meet someone at the bar and you hang out a couple times, you do it a couple activities, you would call them like, "Yeah, I'm friends with them now," you know, like sure, more or less. Yeah, I don't. So why would work? There's like a, there's extra steps. Like if you see someone outside of work, it's like, oh yeah, they're my coworker. Then they can work up to like buddy from work. That's my buddy from work. Then they can work up to work friend. And then they can maybe achieve friend on the fourth tier. Whereas if you meet anyone out, any other context outside of work, they basically just go like they can get a shortcut to friend. Why do we put. Why does work friend, someone you just happen to meet at work, why do they have to try so much harder? Discuss. I'll tell you. Well, here's the thing. Here's a a curveball right back at you. If you see somebody from work that's not your friend or even in the pipeline, but you see them out and have some beers with them accidentally, their shortcut is straight to friendship because they're out. They're doing the social thing with you. You have that shared experience of the outside of work thing Mm -hmm. because the inside of work thing doesn't have as much merit i don't know or as much capital for friendship i think because you have to be there <laughs> i guess i don't know yeah like I or it's like harder to them. trust i don't know why is it is it like i'll tell you i've just okay so i've worked for over two years so this week during my my covid pandemic i for the first time played a video game online with a dude named charles at work and i can say his name i'm not going to bleep it out this time because charles is awesome but he was in my like this Dale Carnegie training we just did. He and I got through it like we knew each other, but because both of us were in this class together, like we would talk like now we're like, I feel like we're friends or on the road to it. And I think wow. playing Warzone together is pretty legit friendship. You know, I'm going to say that now we have each other's numbers. We talk about we're going to go out maybe sometime. So I like this dude. So now I'm like, but it's like basically two years in no, no, sort of. I mean, I didn't really know him that well. Um, he's, he's like a produce team leader. 
he's like into cars must got like a, a dodge challenger or some kind of, it's probably him I'm besmirching this car that he has. It's like a Hellcat or something like this. It's kind of ridiculous car. I'm not really into cars, uh, but he's got this awesome car. But we went through this whole thing, this whole training, and then we would catch up and talk, and then we started talking about games and PC gaming. So now we, we've started playing. We played last night, too. So I'm like, we're friends now. And it only took – but I think we – I feel like we had to go through that exp- shared experience, you know, something that's, like, mm-hmm. not necessarily just work-related, but, like, only maybe only he and I experienced together versus, like, what everybody experiences together. Maybe, maybe we bonded over that. So a smaller aspect of something work related. Maybe, I don't know. Do you hang out with people outside of work? I can't, I work remotely. I mean, but do you, but is there anybody like in your area that you work with? Remo- I mean, no, does not there an office? I've never oh, met. He... I've Wait. never, <clears throat> I've, uh, excuse me. No, that's oh, wrong. I, I have been in an office building for 30 minutes since I've worked for the company for two and a half years, I met one person that was the person who let me into the building and showed me around. And then I left and I don't work directly with that person. They just coordinated for someone local to meet me at the building. And I have never met anyone else locally that works oh, for the shit. same company. Wait, so could you yeah, so do when that I say like I, Kansas? When I say I work remotely, I work virtually, not even remotely. Like I, 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 I don't, don't have interact. to do it there. Huh? Do you have to do it? Could you move though? In theory, could you move to anywhere in the country and still do the same job? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you had. I thought there was like a hub there or something, and you like you don't. No, I didn't realize I mean, you like never go into an office ever to do something. Or... Nope. Everything is done from right where we are holding the podcast. I just spin this yeah. way and face this computer instead. Um. Oh shit. Yeah. No, it's wild. So yeah, I mean, my thoughts were like you're kind of on the same page. You're like, okay, you see everyone. So the forced being around them is, is not an effort made by anyone. Um, the, the, the topics and discussions are certainly you can't just talk about work stuff. That's, that's stupid. You have to find connections on humor and stuff like that. Like one of my buddies, um, Mike from back in Buffalo, he and I, he was actually my supervisor, a temporary supervisor for a week while my supervisor was, uh, on PTO and he quoted MTV's the, uh, the state. And I like leaned over my desk and I'm, and I like quoted something back and I'm like, Oh man. I'm like, well, if we both like that obscure TV show and comedy, I'm like, we're going to be fine. And then just spiraled into friendship from there. But yeah, I mean, if you don't give them credit because of, and you hold over where they work as being like almost a negative that they have to climb out of, that means you dislike them because of where they work. And that's not good because that means that you also work there. So you instantly hate yourself. <laughs> I would never be somebody friends with somebody that works at Wegmans. That's exactly. <laughs> like that's what you're basically saying. And so therefore you hate yourself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just something to consider. I think as a society, we need to stop holding that over people's heads. We do away with work. Yeah. friend. It's not a thing. Stop putting a label on it to maybe make you feel better or them feel better, but they're either your friend or they happen to work at the same place as yeah. you and they are nothing. It's probably just a protection too. Cause it's like, all right, now I'm going to say things that are bad for the work environment, but I got to trust you enough. <laughs> you know, like, that's correct. That yeah, that's a fine line. You yeah. walk with every single person you yeah. ever somewhat talk on the side with is you're like, not only do I have to understand what your humor line is, I have to make sure you're on the same page of what's okay yeah. to talk about in a work yeah. context. And that's tough. That's really tough. There's always a roll of the dice in some way. I have, yeah. I mean, I have, I definitely have relationships with people. Cause even like, yeah, you're right. I have relationships with people like today. I'm bummed. Cause um, the front end manager at the store, like she had been planning this Christmas party for today for like a month. And I mean, she really wanted me to, I mean, I wanted to go too. Like, and I was like planning to go there. I might even have stayed over. Cause I was like, we we're going to have some drinks. They have like couches and stuff. And it's like, I'm ready for this thing, dude. Like it's like, I never been to her place. And like she and her boyfriend have this Christmas party. It was going to be like, does, well, they invited like dozens of people. I don't know how many are going to show up, but it's like, this is going to be awesome. Like play games, like drinking games. I haven't done that in forever. 
now I can't go. So I'm like really bummed. Well, that's brutal, man. That sucks. So she was like, well, if you just didn't want to come, why don't you just say so? You didn't have to get COVID. And I was like, damn it. So maybe I'll just go oh, anyway. Man. I'll be a super spreader. There you go. There you go. No, you want to know what? Stand your ground, big. I need this friendship move. So I'm going to go. And if you give everyone else COVID, that's like a bond. They'll hate you, yeah. but that's a nice bond. Hey, I got you guys all out of work for like five days. So um, yeah, Merry Christmas. You know, it's, it sucks is when I got to go back. Wegmans policies. I got to wear a mask for five days. Yes. I got to wear oh, a mask that's again. Perfect. Oh, God. I, oh I actually God, still I'm have so a couple. I, I, like, I was looking in one of my drawers the other day, cleaning it out. Like I saw a drawer and I had some of the masks in there. And I was like, why do I even have these anymore? I like, have a mask from when we didn't know how masks should be. Um, I bought a Less Than Jake mask from their website in April of 2020. And it was made out of material that 100% like wasn't approved like or the anything. Gator like neck. Like, Oh my God, it's not even a gator neck. No, it was like a weird bootleg material that just goes around the ears and stuff. But like, I look at it, I'm like, no mask you can purchase has this material. And I feel like it just, it was just like when we're like, hey, none of us really know, none of us know how everyone's dying from this thing, but um, (laughs) we need to wear masks. We know that. And then here technically by definition is a mask. So I'm like, sure, I'll pay $5 for whatever this is. Dude, I was wearing bandanas around my mouth for a while. Like I had no, I like no one had any clue. The Lines one, out the door to like the ones I have. Let like twenty five people into the grocery yeah. store at a time. Oh, I remember. I used to have to be the door and mask police in Texas at a store. That sucked. Oh my that was god, the worst. so many people being like, "You don't tell me my freedoms." I, I was like, "Dude, I get it, but this is the thing. Just don't." Right. Just fucking do it. It's not hard to wear a mask. Also, it's just. It's not impeding. It's very People easy. are like, I can't it's breathe under this. Thing. I'm like, you can. Agatha, who's yeah. got an oxygen tank and is smoking outside. I'm <laughs> like, you're mad about this mask. Yeah. Yeah. Just can we just it'll it'll be over in two weeks if we all just do this thing. Nope. <laughs> just stop. Nope. I'm gonna stand my ground like it's Florida and someone's breaking into yeah. my house. I'm gonna stand my ground and fucking drag this bad boy out to 2023. My face is literally imprisoned. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's do scroll them because I want to extend this because this will be maybe my last physical contact of the day. <laughs> Unless I'm counting this as physical right. contact. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really, I haven't talked to him. That's weird. I feel like my uh, symptoms have really held off here. You know what? When it first started out, I was like, good. I'm glad I didn't get the diarrhea that everybody said. And then on day three, it was like, just eight hours of just ultimate <laughs> diarrheal. It was real bad. I was like, no. I'm glad I installed this new bidet that I just got. It was it's a very did you really timely. Get a bidet? I did. I got one of the tushy ones during prime days. It's fun. How is it? It's fun. Just, I just want I want to poop more. I was gonna you just say it's fun. Yeah. Oh, it's no. fun, you know. I wish it would get up there even harder, you know. Oh, my All right. Lord. All right. All right. Wow. That's fun. Uh, I got Aaron winning. Right above my buddy Brett winning. So Aaron is Brett's older brother. So okay. my good friends from Austin. Aaron's one of the coolest dudes I ever knew. He's like Matthew McConaughey without being famous. Like he just lives life very well. Um, he's basically the biggest hustler I've ever met, but in a good way. Like he does a lot of shit. Like he was like one of the first people I knew that was on like Airbnb. Like he would rent these nice places with he and his buddies, but then they would rent them out for like ACL and shit and or South by Southwest. And they make a bunch of money. Like he's done. Like he would go to Mexico or like Peru and like buy scooters or like whatever, like some Toyota or like Jeeps or something like that and bring them back up and sell them. Like he was always, he like never had like a real, jo- well, his real job, he, he had like a certificate in Eastern medicine. So he would do acupuncture. He had a, like a, sp- a space to do that in cupping. Um, but then he would all, I always have these side hustles and he still does it. And then I think before we left Austin, he, he bought like, I don't even, I don't know what the amount is hundreds of pounds of yerba mate leaves from South America. And he had them all in his house, like tons of bags and he like bags them up. Um, and 
I'll, you know, I have a, I'll put a picture in it now because it's like I have a bag over here too. Um, but now he just sells uh, mate, and he's got like in some of the shops around town. He would do this thing called like the hitchhiker race with his friends, where they would like start from I forgot where they started, like in North Carolina or somewhere like that, and get back to Austin. Like they drive out there, and they all had to get back by just hitchhiking with people. What? Like that's the way whoever won the race or something like that, you know. But he'd always be like. Like he had these Christmas parties. This is very timely. He'd have these Christmas parties where people dress up and they'd make like mulled wine. And just like, he's so positive. And like, somehow, I don't get it. I mean, even though, like, wow, why am I so bright? What's happening? Yeah, you're bright. You're, dude, you're, Whoa, you're like, what's going on? Where's this light coming from? I'm scared. You guys, I'm scared. Let me turn this down. Jeez, that was weird. Um, he's so poly. Like, everybody in his life was awesome <laughs> for some reason. Like, and he, like, I like if I, when I was out with him and Brett, and so like I always felt like we were like the black sheep of the crew because we were like a little yeah whatever. But they weren't because they we were they were very accepting of us and like we love all our friends. He's like also into fit. Like he would go to like the high school gym and get people involved in fitness and stuff like that. Like that's how he got Brett into it. That's how I got into it early on in Austin. But um, even when times are bad or things are bad for him, like he's always very positive. So a really awesome wholesome dude he's like i don't know what he's like 45 but he looks like he's 25 he's shredded <laughs> it's just like it's like the coolest motherfucker <laughs> that ever lived he does all awesome things i don't know how he does it um but good dude aaron winning um no no he's the uh hold on i am gonna bleep that because i'm not gonna put out a competitor he's the uh ganas ganas what it's called ganas mate is what he sells so i'm gonna say they're an official sponsor of this podcast because he okay. wouldn't mind me saying that because he wants the publicity because he wants the dozen of people but yeah dude awesome dude i'm glad i landed on him um uh but yeah everything i don't know he's it, it, in terms of like real life people he's one of the few people i'd be jealous of but i'm not because i don't have to be jealous of him because he provides positivity in my life and i got to be you know involved in his life so good dude Wow. I mean, that's the person who earned their last name. Like Ooh, winning. Yeah. Like that's, that's, I love people like that. Like you say, it's like, man, I just want to be around you because you like, <laughs> you're like positivity and like outlook on everything that's even from big to small is, is just phenomenal. And you're like, man, I want to be inside your brain and just <laughs> just live in there because it's exciting, well, intriguing, more than brain. inspiring. All right. That's terrible. Um, all right. So let's see here. Hmm. All right. Well, how do I do this? Uh, Matt Androsco. Um, all right. Well, Matt is uh in auburn he is um someone i met when i was home from oswego and going to ccc i met him at a party in see i can't remember what all of the like apartment locations it was in auburn the apartment complex that's like across from i believe Booker T. Washington Center. Um, there was a party there. I don't even know how we found out, but Joe Turner and I uh, went to a party. Oh, and, Joe Turner. Um, I met these guys from from Weedsport and Port Byron. So Weedsport and Port Byron, for those of you that don't know, are smaller towns near Auburn. So where people go to community college, the community college is in Auburn. So you get people from the surrounding towns going there too. So people not just that I went to high school with. So I remember meeting Matt and a couple other guys because like they knew my brother somehow and so they like hey you're dave's brother i'm like oh yeah so like i just started hanging out with them and going to parties and stuff and the irony now is that <laughs> matt is uh in the, uh, a decently high up in the auburn police department system um and he's someone that i met really? through going through through parties but one thing i loved about Androsco is he was just always like he could get serious for a minute or two but he just had 
this smile and Matt's just always smiling, just like laughing about everything and smiling. And you just forget how contagious some of that stuff can be. It sounds like Aaron kind of has a version of that uh, more inspiring, but like Matt is just like, you're like, you can't be mad around him. Cause you're just always chuckling about something. And that's great stuff to be around. Um, he, you know, has a, has a wife and kid. Um, I actually just oddly enough started talking um, when I was hanging out with my brother, uh, you know, when I was in town, um, he mentioned Androsco, so he came up. So it's kind of funny that he's coming up now. But um, one one weird idea was that um, years ago, years and years ago, this is probably ten years ago now, I was uh, talking to someone about a, an accident that they were involved in. I was in Buffalo, and they got in a car accident, and they were talking to a one of our insureds. And they said the accident happened in Auburn, New York. And I'm like, okay. And then they mentioned it was on Elm Street. And they were like, oh, I'm trying to think of what the intersecting street was. And I go, was it Franklin? Franklin? And they're like, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then they're like, how did you know? And I'm, like, I, I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm like, there, I, yeah. I'm from, I'm like, I'm from Auburn. And they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, did the police show up? They're like, yes. <laughs> And I go, okay, what's the police port number? And I'm like, and what's the, I go, do you happen to have the officer's name? And they're like, yeah, it's Andro. And I go, Androsco. And they're like, dude, what you know too much. They're like, what is <laughs> happening? And I'm like, I'm the best insurance company in the world, motherfucker. Like, I know what your answers are even before you say them. Um, so it was just funny because then I like texted him and I'm like, hey, man, did you report to an accident on Elm Street earlier today? And he just, Shh. I can like hear his chortle and his ha ha's on the text back. He's like, yeah, how'd you know? And I'm like, oh, I got the accident. So yeah, Matt is one of those, uh, you know, one of those friends that I have no negative memories with him uh, because we, we, we were never close in any way, shape or form, but definitely a guy that anytime, if I had seen, if I see him in Auburn, I actually want to stop, talk, exchange pleasantries. Um, tell him. Yeah, I know. Maybe tell him, uh, you know, where I'm going to be, if I'm going to go out for a beer or something later to see if he would want to show up for a beer. Like he's to that extent where I actually do enjoy seeing him, which I cannot say for everyone in the hometown. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Matt in a nutshell. Good guy. Wow. So would you consider him a work friend then since you talked to him? Oh, that does work? not count. No, we were not employed by the same person nor, well, but okay. is he like, right, is that, would that be on the same aspect of like a contractor that you only see at work because of you guys are, you are interacting? Because, is that <laughs> what a colleague is? I always thought a colleague had to be a coworker. But maybe I'm wrong. The world may never know. Okay. Well, yeah, we're not going to go into it anymore because we are just yeah. about at that 30, 40 minute mark. Yeah, we're just about at that 30 minute mark. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I will go enjoy the rest of my day. Yep. Playing Nintendo Switch and watching uh, Fargo. Did you ever watch that? That's what I've been in. I just started it. The show? During my COVID. During my COVID times, yes. No, I never it's watched good. the show. I only saw the movie, um, and that I probably saw about 10 years ago. We, yeah, movie's a classic. The show's good. Just finished the first season. I'm going to keep going. So, okay. um, Some sc script errors, you know, a little bit of some loopholes, but ultimately Terrible. a thrilling and funny show, you know? Good. So. Delightful. Uh, that's what I got. That's the only thing I have in my life right now. Is that and uh, trying to beat this dang last Mario Wonder level. That once you get all the you... badges and or all the coins and seeds and flags, they have this level come up. But it's really hard, and I hate it. So you got all the flags and seeds. I did. Jesus I had a freak. I had a not busy week. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, that's true. I guess yeah. if you're literally confined to your apartment, then that that, yeah. that that that's warranted. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but then once you do that, you get this other level, and it's really hard, and I hate it. And I've played it for like an hour and a half, and I still haven't beaten it. But it's fun. Something hard to grind on. Oh God, just end the show. Does it work properly? It's an A.
I'm Han Solo. Yeah.